Our basic problem in life is that we want a stable happiness. And yet life itself is built on instability. The functions of the body, even when you get down to the cellular level, it's all based on instability. If everything in the body reached equilibrium, you'd be dead. So living in a body is like riding waves in the surf. One wave comes, and you ride it for as far as it can go, and then another wave comes, and you ride that one as far as it can go. But there's always going to be a time when you have to change. And while you're riding the wave, it's unstable. One false move on your part, and you fall right off the surfboard. So you're not going to find any stability in the body. And even a lot of the functioning of the mind, all the activities the mind goes through, they're pretty unstable too. So many of them depend on the, on the body, on your brains functioning properly. When it comes right down to it, the, the big borderline is not between body and mind, but it's between the part of the mind that is free from activity and all this other activity which encompasses both the body and the mind. And so I, we try to use the activity of the body, use the activity of the mind, to bring ourselves to something that lies beyond body, beyond mind. It lies outside all these systems and all these functions that are so unstable. And so both the normal processes of, the, of life and the process of the practice are unstable processes, which means that in the course of the practice there are bound to be ups and downs, times when the meditation goes well, times when it doesn't go so well. And you have to learn not to let yourself get overcome by the times when it goes well or when it goes, doesn't go well at all. Each moment can always be a fresh start, which sounds good when things haven't been going well, but when things have been going very well, it means you have to be very careful. And you have to learn how to, how to take the ups and downs. If you simply think about how good the meditation used to be and then it's not good anymore, if your mind is filled with what it used to be, there's no, time, there's no space in your mind for what's going on right now. So you have to learn to clear those thoughts away. The same when meditation hasn't been going well. You can never tell when the breakthroughs were going to come, when things suddenly start turning around. Because the course of your practice doesn't follow a neat craft line. It's very erratic. And so the trick is to learn how to learn from whatever comes. When things have been good, okay, learn from what's been good. When things haven't been good, try to learn from what hasn't been good. You learn what works, what doesn't work, so that every meditation is a learning experience. You gain from every session. Whether it's you, what you wanted to gain when you sat down, that's not the issue. Look at for what it has to offer. It's like going out in the orchard. You might want avocados all the time, but there's parts of the year when they don't have any avocados to give you. But there are mustard greens, okay? So you take the mustard greens and you make food out of those. In other words, you take advantage of what you've got. Learn how to ride the ups and downs. Now this doesn't mean just accepting whatever comes along and not doing anything about it. And John Shaw called that the equanimity of a water buffalo. As we were saying yesterday, equanimity in the various lists where it appears always comes last. In other words, when things aren't going well, you try one approach. If that doesn't work, you try another approach. Keep chipping away, keep experimenting. And if you find that you just can't make any headway, okay, that's when you have to develop equanimity. Say, for, at least for this session, there's nothing more I can do. Just learn how to ride with what's there.
But you also have to be careful in what the Buddha taught you to be contented with and what not to be contented with. When he talks about contentment in the text, it's content with, what, with the food you've got, the shelter you've got, the clothing you've got, the medicine you've got. In other words, be contented with your, the externals. If you go around looking for the absolute perfect place to practice or the absolute perfect teacher, you'll never have a chance to practice. Because perfection isn't something you find in the world of activity, which is the world around us and the world in the body, most of the mind. You make the best of the externals, but one area where he doesn't have you be contented is inside the mind. You do what you can. You have to have a certain amount of equanimity about the pace of your progress. But there always has to be part of you that keeps pushing, 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 trying to find new ways of dealing with old problems that haven't yet gone away, or old problems that keep coming back. The Buddha teaches basic principles, but he, the way you apply it at any particular time, that has to be up to your own ingenuity. So what this comes down to is there are no easy and quick rules about how you deal with a particular situation. There are lots of complexities, because everything is so unstable. But having the right attitude it helps an awful lot. Attitude, okay, there's something here to learn. Whether it's the, what I wanted to learn today, that's not the issue. Whether I get quite the results I wanted tonight, that's not the issue either. If nothing seems to be happening in the meditation, it means you're looking the wrong place, you're looking at the wrong problem. Turn around and look around. What lessons do you have to learn? What lessons are the ones that are being offered right now? Learn those lessons. Because you can't determine the practice in advance. The way each person's mind develops, regresses, develops again. It varies from person to person. And from day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year, even the same person will find things go differently. So try to be very clear about where you are in any particular situation, what's going on, what you're doing, what the results are. So you learn how to ride with the instabilities and not get overthrown by them. Learn how to take advantage of them. Because this is what skills are all about, especially skills in the mind. And John Fuhr once said, when you come here to meditate, it's not simply the skills you learn while you sit with your eyes closed. It's the skills you develop throughout the day, whatever the situation, whatever the task that needs to be done. The attitude that's willing to develop a skill, willing to, willing to look at your own mistakes, see where you can do things better. That's the attitude that will take you all the way through, as in the Buddha's instructions to Rahula. It's the honesty to be clear about your intentions, when they're good intentions, when they're not so good, and also the honesty to be clear about the results of your actions. to see where improvement might be made, even if it's in just little things. Because sometimes the little things can open up unexpected vistas. They can turn into large, important things that you have a tendency to overlook. Because after all, the Buddha gained awakening while watching his breath. You're sitting here watching your breath. Why aren't you gaining awakening? Because you're not paying attention to the details the way he did. There's something you're overlooking. This applies to all of us. So keep looking. And the Buddha points out where to look. Look at what you're doing. Look at the results of what you're doing. In other words, if you want to get to that point where you're beyond activity, that part of the mind which is totally outside of the dimensions created by activity, you first have to master the processes of activity, the processes of cause and effect, in particular cause and effect in the mind, right here, right now. 
So it means paying careful attention to what you're doing, careful attention to the results. Even though it's the same spot right here at the breath, there's always new things to see. Or sometimes it's old things that have always been there, but you suddenly get a, a chance to see them in ways that you didn't before. That's why we keep paying attention to the same spot over and over and over again. Because this is where everything happens. Everything comes out of this spot, the mind in the present moment. So get to know it really well. Whatever the lessons that are being taught, whatever the lessons it's offering right now, notice what they are and be willing to learn them. And that's the way the meditation progresses. 